Investing in gold doesn't have to be complicated. I'm Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold Investments, and I want to take the time to show you how investing in a gold IRA can help you hedge your bets against inflation and other economic concerns on the horizon. Visit Noble Gold Investments and get our free gold investment guide on buying gold the right way. And make sure you're investing with the right company. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Investing in gold doesn't have to be complicated. I'm Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold Investments, and I want to take the time to show you how investing in a gold IRA can help you hedge your bets against inflation and other economic concerns on the horizon. Visit Noble Gold Investments and get our free gold investment guide on buying gold the right way. And make sure you're investing with the right company. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com. My first question off the top of my head is, do you have any idea how come they're able to suppress the price of silver? That is a great question. I, you know, I, I think what it has to do is, is that you have these ability on the stock market when you have a smaller market. I mean, silver is a much smaller market than gold or a lot of other assets out there. So I, I, I think what I've typically seen, if you just look at what's happening, stock trading is that you have these you know, major companies that have these ability to buy and sell. And there's a lot of margins that are played on silver. So there's a lot of money to make. Because when you look at silver moving a dollar, which is pretty easy. I don't know how much you watch the silver market. But silver I can watch it every dollar. day. Yeah, silver can move up a dollar very quickly. And so and it can go down a dollar very quickly. So I think a lot of it is just there's a lot of money in hedge funds playing both sides of that market because it can be so easily manipulated because it is a smaller market um, uh, than some of the other things that are out there. Gold is much more difficult. It's a much bigger market. So I think a lot of the reason the price has been suppressed is just this ability to, to buy and sell and make significant profits of, you know, those $1 movements are 7 8% growth up or down. And that's a, that's a huge profit margin for day traders. So that's typically what I've seen. If, if you look at mining today, you know, mining costs for silver, all the reports I've let, read over the last two to three months, they say mining costs are anywhere from 20 to $22 today. So sitting at 25 where we're sitting today is, is not that far off. And um, so I think the downside, if mining continues to be that expensive, uh, the downside is really low based on the the amount of industrial demand that we're seeing out there. And the industrial demand is from solar panels and and um, electric vehicles, which they want to go to. And then just all this stuff that we're on, all the electronics, there's a lot of use in silver uh, and, and there's just not enough to keep up with that. So they, they need 80 or 90 million more ounces in the next five to 10 years. And they, they, they don't know how they're going to find that many ounces of silver to keep up with um, with the demand. Well, why why hasn't it? Because, you know, historically, the ratio between the silver and gold price is 16 to 1. And it's not anywhere near that. Like 80 something to 1. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I, I don't think it's going to get back to 16 to 1 anytime soon. Uh, you know, I think that. Gold has has really uh, the demand in central banks for gold has skyrocketed and will continue to keep the price up uh, of gold for the foreseeable future. Uh, silver to get back to sixteen and one would be sitting at you know six or seven hundred dollars an ounce, which would be great. Um, but I, I don't think we're there to hit those numbers yet. You know, the all time high of silver, I'm sure you know, is like pretty pretty much around fifty dollars. And so what is it going to take to get us there? And I think that's the, the number that everybody's sort of looking at. And with today's demand, it's very reasonable for us to get back to 50. It's very reasonable get, to get back to 30, which is where I think silver will hit this year. I think silver breaks 30 this year because you not only have, you know, in demand of, you know, all these industries, but also jewelry. If you look at really jewelry demand, jewelry demand for silver has, has really gone up dramatically during the pandemic. Jewelry, silver jewelry was up 300% because people wanted a little bit of luxury at home. Uh, they also said um, makeup and different things like that went up pretty significantly also. So people wanted an affordable item. So even just silver demand in jewelry is going to help the price of it because it's it's a metal that people can afford. I mean, not everyone can afford gold. Not I was talking to someone the other day about platinum, you know, for rings. 
And it's, you know, even though platinum is very affordable right now, it's still, you know, over well over a thousand dollars an ounce. So to get a silver ring or a platinum ring is, is a whole different hemisphere for a lot of people. So I think the idea that silver is, has this uh, industrial demand, it has this jewelry demand. And then the last thing I like about silver, which happened last year, is they've created some ETFs in India that, that were in place before. So India has been a massive buyer for gold for forever. And now uh, buyers, and you know, that economy is really growing. There's a number of ETFs there where they can actually buy silver. And so there's a whole new buying pool of younger people in India that have, have already loved gold and they're, they're starting to buy silver also. So you have these new buyers uh, in the market that, that we've never seen. And we've seen a lot of younger people at Noble Gold um, I was telling someone earlier today that our average age uh, for a client has shifted really a lot over the last few years. We actually went from an average age client of around 50 uh, to about 43, 44 right now as our average age client. Hmm. That's a big, big change for us. Uh, so there's a lot of younger people uh, buying gold and silver than ever before. Hmm. Who, do, who do you go to for a, a concise uh, rundown on all these markets? Um, there's a lot of data all over. I mean, the London exchange is one place to look for it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of places to get information about what's happening in the markets. I'm, I'm subscribed to a number of channels about mining and, and I've gone to a few, um, you know, virtual conferences over the last few years. Just, I, I, I want to know what's happening on the ground with mining and silver, right. especially because what happened, you know, I think I, I got more interested in the mining of silver, um, during the pandemic because, it was so difficult to get silver and you really were trying to figure out where the silver was coming from at that point. And so much of the silver was coming from, from Mexico that gets brought here in the U S and you could see how all the supply chain issues that we were having on un people unable to get silver for in droves. So that's where I've been typically kind of keeping an eye on things. And that's why I was mentioning that data of, of the cost of, of silver. And I also think it's a really good indicator of, of where the price could potentially go because, you know, the lower the mining cost is obviously the more downside risk there is for the metal, but we're pretty close to where the price is today. And that's why I think a lot of people are, are really diving into silver because it's, it's, if you're pulling out of the ground at 2021 and the, you know, you're buying it in the end result, you know, 24 to $26, depending on which coin or bar you're into, that's not that far of a gap. Um, so I think that it shows that the downside is sort of, sort of low on the metal. Uh, and, and in essence, if they're mining it at those prices, even if the price did go down, then they would just have to basically stop mining because they, they wouldn't have profit and they're not going to stop mining. So I think that the goal is, is that prices will continue to move up. And as I said, I, I really do think silver this year is conservatively at $30. Uh, could go higher depending on what happens with interest rates. Uh, I don't know where you stand on things, but I do think even though the feds sort of come out and said they're not going to, I do think the last meeting this year, I think they'll, they're lower interest rates a little bit. Um, and I think that will help the price of, of gold and silver. Yeah, but if Biden keeps spending, then uh, it's still going to be very inflationary. And True. I, yeah, no, it, it's a good point. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think Biden is well intent intentioned at all. I think he's he's going to do whatever maximizes the damage to the United States economy. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, it's it's a lot of the things we have going on right now don't seem to make a lot of sense in an, in a high inflationary period. Uh, to add on more debt, you know, talking about you know last year we were talking about the college spending and and you know the debt reduction for 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 that and. You know, all the things they're trying to pass today, there's still things with COVID that are trying to get passed even today. Uh, so that, you know, I, I don't think that makes a lot of sense to do any more spending there. Um, uh, I even read a bill today or what they're talking about is adding some of the COVID relief to business owners. So having business owners contribute um, to that COVID relief that they gave out. And the idea of that COVID relief was to help out business owners. So it's it's sort of, counterintuitive today where all this money is going to come from. Uh, and that's why we have this debt ceiling problem, right? We, we have McCarthy's got a, a, a solution to, to reduce some of the debt and they're, they're asking for a trade-off. They're asking for a trade-off. Let's reduce some of the spending here. Let's get, let's get our books in order. And then we can agree on raising the debt ceiling this time, but then maybe we don't have to have this conversation every six months. Right. 
But the problem is, is that they, you know, the, the other side doesn't re reduce anything they don't want to cut back. And so, as you mentioned, I think we're, we're just continuing to have this self-fulfilling prophecy where we keep spending more than we have and it puts our country in a very bad position. Yeah. Well, I hate to say it and I don't want to press you into a corner about it, but I don't think it's an accident. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't, it's not, it's not, um, you know, it's not fiscally conservative to make these kind of moves in this in this environment. If if we're really trying to get our inflation under control, and and listen, inflation has gone down. Just you know, a lot of people aren't aware of inflation has gone down. The reported numbers we were, last month we were just under five percent. So we've started a trend in the right direction. The problem is is that now we're in a position with these high interest rates that other areas of the economy are going to start to struggle, like real estate real estate has been struggling, it will continue to struggle with these high rates. So there has to be a point here where we can get rates down so we can keep that engine going, the real estate engine, which a lot of jobs, a lot of taxes, a lot of money at stake uh, if we don't see real estate pick up. Um, I, I don't know if you saw Brookstone, one of the biggest owners of real estate in the country, just gave back two office buildings uh, this year back to the bank. And that's a bad position when you have these large owners wanting to give, just handing the keys back because they can't, there's no way they can come up with this next mortgage. They can't, they can't right. do it at these rates. So there's a lot of things happening that, that we need to be careful of. Um, and, and obviously the debt is a big conversation too at 32, $33 trillion. So um, yeah, I think this year is going to be real murky and, and with investments in general, it's probably going to be pretty tough for a lot of, a lot of your typical investments, real estate, stocks, things like that are going to be, are going to struggle for the remainder of this year. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've got Chinese guys lining up at the border right now with pockets full of cash, mm -hmm. uh, in order to come in and, uh, start, uh, buying up on, um, residential real estate. And that's going to drive real estate high prices even higher. And I just, I, I can't figure it all out. It's just, it, there's too many variables for me. Yeah, they did that in Canada too. Toronto had the same. So Toronto, Toronto's whole real estate uh, explosion was from uh, Chinese money. Um, mm. and, and, you know, Chinese were moving money there because they wanted to get out of China in any which way they could because they right. just don't feel comfortable there. So yeah, it makes sense that they want to start buying here. And, and you know, with obviously prices being depressed, um, they see they see an opportunity to to come to this country and start picking up some of this real estate. So it makes sense. I mean, listen, investors want to distress assets wherever they can get them. And I think they know, you know, long term, you know, our real estate is good. People want to live here. This is still a great country. So it will pick up over time. Um, but right now they, they think there's some opportunities to pick up some real estate uh, cheaper than normal. And probably all cash, right? So, uh, well, yeah, or at least you for, it, for a down payment, they wouldn't have have any negotiations. They just pay whatever the uh, asking price was. That's the theory. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's sort of, you know, uh, a strange position for us as a country, too, because we want to keep assets owned by us here in the U.S. We want to have that strength. Um, but in the same regard, there's, you know, people that say like, well, I'd love to sell my house at the price that it was a year and a half ago. So it's we're sort of in a position here where, you know, as a country, we want to keep assets owned and keep the money here in the U.S. But, you know, we'll see how they how they handle those buyers uh, sort of moving forward. And, and you know, I, I think, you know, where we are now with this debt ceiling talk in a few weeks, you know, where things would go. And, th and then the catastrophe that could happen if we if we default uh, for for a lot of people in this country, I mean that would affect um, every social security person that gets social security. It would affect you know all the uh, employees of the government could potentially they could stop paying. Um, I mean, there's just go down the line. I mean, there's some interest payments yeah. could stop. That's uh, not going to happen. I, even Biden isn't that crazy because that that would even in the short term be a very large negative political consequence. True. Let me ask you I something agree. else that I, I know I don't know much about, and that is, what is the uh, is there any relationship between crypto and gold and silver that uh, you find interesting or want to pass on to people? Yeah, I mean, I, I think well, I, I two things. One, um, you know, we have a, a crypto business that helps people buy crypto in their IRA called My Digital Money. So anyone's interested, um, they can do that with us, and and that's been progressing very well. 
uh, because a lot of the the funny business and crypto, those companies are sort of going away and they're they're adding more regulation to that industry, which is good for what we're doing because I believe regulation in that space will will make it uh, more competent and, and safer for investors. So um, so that's the first thing that's happening. Uh, the crypto buyer, since I've been doing gold for the last 13 years, I've always felt the crypto uh, buyer is almost the, the same buyer as gold. They're just younger. Um, it's it's the same idea that you want your money out of the system that you don't want you you like that peer to peer because that's really what crypto is all about peer to peer transactions and you don't want a central uh, bank or a government controlling the money it's the gold buyer is the same person right, this, right. They, they they want the same control of their assets they want something outside of the control of the government so I've always felt that they were you know sort of the same person just at, at a younger time or a different time in their life. Um, the only uh, other connection that I can see is what Texas is trying to do with the, their digital currency. They're trying to pass a law that would have uh, a gold backing their own currency, but it would be a digital currency. Uh, and I think it's quite interesting. I mean, they built this depository in Texas, uh, which has a lot of gold. I don't think they'd have enough. They'd have to buy more, but they they want to have another currency uh, outside of the dollar, outside of other currencies that that they could issue to people in Texas. And in theory, people could use it anywhere, but it would give them a currency that's backed at least partially by gold. Um, so I've seen, I'm starting to see this more. And I think there's a lot of validity to the idea that they could have this currency. Uh, I, I still don't know how comfortable people are with, with just a digital currency, even if it's backed by gold. I think there's, there's still some issues fundamentally for a lot of people, but overall, if you look at how the use cases would be, it would, it'd be almost like having like a credit card, you know, you could transact. I'm sure there'd be an easy way to transact, uh, but you would know that that currency, the, the volatility and the uh, downside risk would be much lower because it would have to be backed by something t uh, digital. And so it would create some kind of stability uh, for that currency and, and potentially for that state. And what I would say is that it's really a reaction to what a lot of other states have already done. You know, Utah and a number of other states have been accepting gold and silver for payment for many years, and it's proved to be very successful for them. So I think Texas is just piggybacking on that and then taking uh, them one step farther um, than they are. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. I, I actually did a story on that and I'd already forgotten so, yeah, you know, I'm all for it as long as it doesn't involve the federal government, because the federal government has been lying all along about the amount of gold left in Fort Knox. And so it, it doesn't really matter what uh, what the backing is to me. It, all that matters is who's controlling the amount. Yeah, I and agree. I think I think they should let you in there, Bill, and do an audit. Let Bill into Fort Knox, let it with a big crew, let him go in there. Because no one's been in there, right? They did an audit of Bank of New York, I think, two, three years ago. Um, but they've never done Fort Knox since, what, the 80s, early 80s? Was that the last time? I'm not, I don't remember. Oh, uh, gosh. You know, I I don't remember. All I remember is is the, the woman from the Treasury holding up, going in front of a wall of gold bricks, saying, look, it's all here. Only <laughs> was the, the color of the gold was not right. <laughs> oh, is that right? Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's all here and just pointing to behind you. Does I mean, does anybody count it? That doesn't really, you know. No, prove. you're supposed to. You're supposed to take that nice lady's word for it. <laughs> you know what? I I I always do this, and I'm going to go in a few weeks. But I go to Texas and I do audits of our clients' accounts. And um, you know, people always ask me, "Do you just go and look?" And I go, "No, I don't go and look. I I take so what I do is I take 100 to 150 receipts. I send it to them." And then they they pull the metals out when I'm there and they open because it's shrink wrap. So they open it up when I'm there and then I count it per, per ounce, you know, and I count all, you know, the bars and, and everything. And it's fun. I love it. I love it. It's one of the best parts of this job. Yeah. And then I mess with the guys in the vault because I always tell them there's more gold, which they don't like that joke at all. Oh, this is supposed to only 20 ounces. It's got 23 ounces. It's nice of you guys really adding a few ounces there. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't just look at the wall and go, oh, it's all there. I actually count the ounces and uh, and make sure that that there's enough in there. And uh, it's 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 pretty cool. Actually, last time I was there, I saw a, um, it's not one of our clients, but there's a, a six million dollar 
uh, gold coin that's there. That's a hundred kilos. Um, and it's this, it's like the size of a tire and the Royal Canadian mint made this coin. They made like five or six of them. And it's just this massive thing and they have it in a case and it's just like $6 million of gold, you know, sitting right there. It's so cool. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a fun part of the job, but yeah, I mean, four Knox is, is a mystery. Uh, you know, the fact that they just, you know, you know, I know representative Mooney has tried to pass bills. It just like, let us in there let us do a count. And, and it just seems to to uh, fall in deaf ears. Yeah, because it's not there. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 listen, I don't know if it's not there, but I know that they won't do an audit. So I don't know where that translates in between. But yeah, no, I agree with you. It's It seems like it would be. So, and you know what it would do, especially if they did it right now. It would make us look much stronger as a country, as a currency than we than people currently believe we are. If we went in there and go, hey, we have 8,800 tons. What is it, 80, 88, 13 or something? They went in there and counted it all out. We had it. People go, okay, you know, whatever that's worth. I don't even, I haven't even done the math. You know, whatever that's worth, like that, they have that. Yeah, they have some debts, but they got some, you know, considerable amount of gold. I think it would be good for a country to do that. You yeah. Know, as long as they got somebody competent good, in there to good, count it. Good politically for any, uh, any politician to support the counting of it too. And so why hasn't it been done? Because it's not there. Yes, it's not. <laughs> that's the secret. It's not there. Yeah, exactly. Well, they can get somebody in there that's not great at counting, too. You know, they could just count. <laughs> Maybe they have half. You know, who knows what they got there? Biden. Biden. <laughs> He'd be perfect. I'm sorry. I miscounted. No one would. Everyone would believe him. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's I mean, I think, you know, you're you're on the ground on this every day. Like we're in such unique times with this economy it's it nobody knows what to do nobody is predicting uh no one's feeling as comfortable as they used to and and just the investment landscape in general is is so weird because you know just give you an example it's like you know all these uh you know these shoes that are selling now and there's one this guy lebron james brought out a shoe that's like an nft and it's selling like crazy. so much investment money is going to these oddities nowadays as opposed to normal things and i think it's so much of it has to do with the fact that just the comfort level of the traditional investments has sort of gone away um from where you know obviously we've seen art we've seen you know collectibles and these things just skyrocket right. and it's like why and it's because people don't feel comfortable in your traditional assets anymore. Uh, and, and I think it'll come back and I think things will, you know, eventually come back once we get our, our uh, things in order, but it, it's definitely changed a lot since I've been in the investment space that, you know, people are looking at these other things uh, you know, whiskey, people buying a, a sharing, there's these ways you can buy a small share of a, of a Japanese whiskey bottle and it's gone up 200% or something. I mean, this is unprecedented that all these investments are, are things people are considering today, as opposed to things like this, you know, things that really have value, you know, that whiskey bottle, once that bottle, someone drinks it, it's not worth anything. These things are worth something for a long time and they actually have use. You know, you can actually use this in industry. So I, I just, it's such strange times, but uh, I think you and I are sort of of the older guard, old school. And we just think like everything eventually is going to come back. I, I hope everything will come back to some normalcy and people will uh, will straighten things out and realize that these these are the things that really matter. Right. But, uh, anybody yeah. wants uh, information about Noble Gold Investments, if you don't want to talk to anybody, which I respect, you can go to our website, noblegoldinvestments.com and just, you know, put in information and just mention in the box that you, you heard about us on Bill Still. Or if you want to talk to somebody live, you can call us and you can talk to a live person here in the U.S. 877-646-5347. And uh, yeah, the, all the information is there. And Bill, thank you for, uh, I, I love coming on and, and chatting up here about what's happening in the world. And, and, you know, obviously I love our partnership. So thank you so much. Thank you.